Good morning and week. Welcome to week. 27. 37. And it the is the last, last one. Week. It really is the last week. And in fact, we're doing some sort of ending things here. We're just making some uh, covers for the batteries so you can't drop your spanner on them and things like that. And we're going to get the big saw packed away, uh, get that off. And uh, yeah, it really is there, isn't it? It's unbelievable. <laughs> we're starting to take things home, actually. Yeah, we are. We are. We're starting to clear the decks. I'm actually really sad. <laughs> Are you joking? I can't be sad. Uh, it's, uh, it's been an awful long time and so I, tiring. I, I don't think after we get the boat in the water, we won't know what to do. No. I think we're going to end up like, what are we doing today? Uh, there's still going to be things to sort out yeah, and just things to finish yeah. and get going. But basically, the boat's going to be ready uh, tomorrow uh, to go in the water. And on the weekend, I'm going to give it a little clean and polish so that... Uh, I'm going to nice. London. Have fun. <laughs> Just doing the last uh, connections for the the lithium bank, and uh, we had a change of heart halfway through the process about how we were actually going to configure these. And I've got a little diagram to show you what we were going to do and what we have done. And though I don't understand all the physics behind it, I'm going to tell you the reason why as well. I just thought we would spend a few minutes talking about uh, this lithium battery bank installation and uh, what in the end we have decided to do. I'm not an expert at this and so don't take what I'm saying as gospel and also I have been getting advice from somebody who is a lot more knowledgeable uh, than me. So let's dive in and have a little look. Each lithium cell is around 3.2 volts. The original plan was to run four cells in series giving four separate batteries at 12.8 volts. Each block would be 160 amp hours. These blocks would then be joined together in parallel to make one 640 amp hour battery at 12.8 volts. However, I've been advised that a better solution would be to parallel up the four cells into one block at 3.2 amps, then connect each block in series to make one battery at 640 amps. 12.8 volts. I have to say I don't totally understand the physics behind the different configurations but I am informed that this second configuration will make a single battery which can be managed by one BMS battery management system. The original plan would have required four BNS units to manage the lithium. What are your thoughts? You probably know more than me. Please leave your comments below. Looks like he's uh, turning on buttons day to day, isn't it? <laughs> what did you turn on now? Uh, lithium bank's on and uh, the shore power's on and uh, the inverter's running so uh, we can put the fridge on and the freezer yeah. and it's all coming together really quickly. It's all coming together really, really quickly. <laughs> Exciting. So I hope that helped explain the lithium uh, setup, but I also I thought we would try and have a look at the actual schematic of the electrical system as a whole. Because some of you might have noticed that um, there's actually two cables uh, coming off each end of the lithium uh, battery bank and going through the system. And that's because uh, the um, inverter, which is a three kilowatt inverter, uh, requires up to about 250, 300 amp. Uh, uh, to provide the power to convert it to, to 240 volts. And therefore you actually need two 70 mil cables uh, to connect each item together to get enough power through that cable. So let's have a little look at that. At the heart of the system is a Victron Energy Octopus Inverter Charger. Let's start with the shore power. This is connected with a chassis plug on the side of the boat. The earth runs through a galvanic isolator which will prevent electric shock from having one foot on the metal pontoon and a hand or a foot on the boat. The solar system. We have three 640 watt panels on the pilot house roof. Each panel is connected to an isolation switch. Then an MPPT 
Victron Energy controller, followed by a fuse before being connected in parallel and then connecting on to the buzz bars and the inverter. The alternator. We actually have two alternators. The second alternator on the port side of the engine is connected directly to the buzz bars. The buzz bars are connected to the inverter's positive and negative poles with an isolating switch on the positive side. The 7kVA gen set, the output from the generator, goes through a trip before going directly to the, the inverter. This is connected to the second 240 volt input on the octopus. The positive feed from the batteries first go through a 300 amp fuse, onto an isolation switch, through the BMS and onto the positive buzz bar. The negative cable is connected to the shunt. This monitors the current and then on to the negative buzz bar. There is a main earth on the keel of the boat that the inverter, the negative buzz bar, the solar panels, the alternator and the generator are connected to. The buzz bar also provides 12 volt power to the pumps, lights and other 12 volt equipment. The 240 volt output from the inverter goes to a distribution board. Each circuit is protected by individual 16 amp RCBO trips. Well I hope that explains uh, the main electrical system on the boat. I'm not saying this is absolutely right and there's an awful lot of different ways that you can actually do all of this but this is the way that uh, we've put this together. In addition to that there's uh, three other electric circuits on the boat. There's the electric in the bow locker for the uh, windlass and the bow thruster and also there's two starter batteries in the engine room one for the engine and one for the generator uh, they are both recharged via um, battery chargers and also uh, from another alternator on the starboard side of the engine we've had a bit of a bit of a disaster in that um, the bow thruster is faulty and uh, basically it's been sitting in the bow locker for probably seven years and uh, it's kind of corroded up a little bit and uh, seized up. And I was talking to Paul of Vitesse Marine, uh, the Vitesse dealer down in uh, Fairham, Southampton, and he said to me that a new motor is 900 pounds, uh, but he said take it to a rewind shop and they should be able to fix it for a couple of hundred. So we're off to Slough this morning to see whether we can uh, get these guys to repair it. See if we can find a bit cheaper. Yeah. I think if it's 50% of the price, then really we might as well have a new one. But it's uh, it'll be a bit of a, a bit of a good uh, save if we can get it. So my job today is uh, to run this cable from the nav station to the bow thruster. Um, it was a bit of a nightmare pulling it down from the nav station. But now it will be difficult, but not impossible. So, yeah, I have to go and try, just try to be very tidy all along the way. And uh, take it under the bed, and Simon will make a hole uh, to go through the bow locker. which is 34 and a half. I'm putting the catches on the uh, engine room because I need them to be closed properly. It's a bit of a fiddly job actually because I think Part of the fittings were missing. Let's see what happens. There we go. Whoa! And actually, they are lockable, which is all rather good. So that's one down, two to go. Right. We 
might as well get arrested, mightn't we? It's done. Okay guys, this is it. This is the first time. We've just bled the system. We've put in uh, 60 litres of diesel and the engine wouldn't start. And uh, so we, I read the book and it said, uh, open, open the fuel valve. <laughs> so I opened the fuel valve. And this is it. Woo! So that's really good news. So the engine starts and uh, we're going. Um, there isn't any oil pressure, that's slightly worrying, but it could just be that there's a you know, connection not made. It doesn't mean to say there isn't any oil pressure. But that is the biggest thing we could be grateful for in this whole project is that the damn Vita starts and it started first time. So we finally managed to put the door handles on and uh, trying to lock the pilot house and this sign is here because we got robbed a few days ago uh, they took some uh, tools um, and Simon had to buy uh, another drill for example and uh, it was really sad because I told the boat yard that they said they're gonna see you on the CCTV but they haven't come back to us to say anything <laughs>